Oh, yo! Hello, my velvets, and welcome back to GYOG. Here I am in my wardrobe, because did you know, I love clothes! <gasps> oh, yo! I love all types of clothes, and shoes, and bags, and hats, and accessories, and brooches, and earrings, and colourful paints for the face, and eyebrow paints. They are my favourite. My sister, Vivian, she tells me that I am always wearing too many things, that I should take one off. But I think she is just wanting to steal something from me when I take it off. There's this person called Marie Kondo, she is amazing. And she says, you must touch everything you have. And if it gives you joy, then you should keep it. And if it doesn't spark joy in you, then you should give it to someone else. Because there might be someone else out there who finds joy in it. But the thing is, all of these things give me joy! Oh, joy! 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 Oh, so much joy! Look at all these colours! And pa I pulled this one down! And patterns! And textures! Oh, so much joy! I think that it is important that we feel happy and proud of the way we look. As if we are the best version of ourselves or our favourite version of ourselves. Now, that might be with lots of colours and patterns, like me, or it might be something very simple, a black t-shirt and jeans or something that make us feel strong and powerful, whatever makes you happy. And there might be days where you don't want to make that kind of effort and you think, why do I want to be the best version of myself? I just want to be simple. Maybe some tracky bottoms or a t-shirt that I haven't washed for a couple of weeks, that is fine. Has spaghetti stains down the front? That is okay. If it makes you happy, that is all that matters. It is your body. And you must do what makes you happy. And that could be something different every single day. And you might think, Oh, yo, this thing, it is for girls. Or, oh, yo, this thing, it is just for boys. Why? I don't know who made these rules. But they are not my friends, that's for sure. There are lots of famous people out there who are really experimenting with clothes and having lots of fun. Harry Styles is one of them. He used to be in One Direction. And also Billy Porter, who is very exciting and exhilarating in the way that he dresses. And Lizzo. Oh, I love Lizzo. She is great. Then you have people who play around with tailoring, that is, suits and shapes and sizes, like Marlena Dietrich, or Grace Jones, or David Byrne. Oh, that is such a wonderful big suit. Imagine all of the exciting things you could carry in those pockets. So many snacks. Most of my clothes I find in charity shops or second-hand shops or maybe I do a little swapsy with a friend or two because some things that has good vibes on one person might not have such cool vibes on another, you know? We are all different shapes and sizes, so we look different in different things. My sister, Vivian, says that one way to dress really, really special is to wear your ghost outfit. That's mad. Don't you think? A ghost outfit is what you would wear if you came back to haunt someone. You know, your most ultimate, fabulous version of yourself. So, when you are haunting them, they look and they go, ah! Oh, they are dressed very well. Wow. This is my ghost outfit. But more on that later. Costume is a very important part of theatre 
because it allows the audience to read and understand what kind of character they are seeing on stage. And as performers, it helps us to get into the role. For example, say you are playing a teacher. Well, what can you wear that makes you look like you are a teacher? Or maybe a sneaky detective. Or a professional deep sea diver. Hmm. Well, what will you need to wear to make the audience understand that's what you are? What we wear on stage sends signals to the audience and they are able to read and understand what they are seeing. This is called semiotics. Oh, your semiotic sounds like a fancy word, but it really just means the signals that we send and how they are read or understood by the person who is reading them. For example, the colour red. So say I am playing a character and I dress head to toe in the colour red. Now that would be a red t-shirt, a red jumper over the top of that, red trousers, red socks, you know, nice little socks that are turned over at the top as they are all red, red shoes, some red shoelaces, the soles of the shoes, they would also be red. And then over that have a red coat with a big red hood and maybe a red scarf, some red lipstick, uh, maybe I'm wearing red hair or I have dyed my hair red. Then I have a red handbag. In the handbag there is maybe a red phone, then there is a red purse. Maybe I've done some shopping that day so I have got lots of red items from the supermarket like apples is a good <laughs> red thing and also some beetroots and some radishes are also red. Um, there are some other red things as well. Maybe a packet of biscuits that are red on the outside and so on and so forth. <laughs> you understand what I am saying. <clears throat> So what does the colour red mean to you when you see it? Perhaps it will mean danger, or beware, or passion, or love. So what do we think when we see someone wearing it on stage? Oh, they are a dangerous character, or oh, they must be in love, or they like dressing big and bold and they want everyone to pay attention to them. Semiotics! I just love saying that word. It makes me sound very clever, you see? Gesamkunstwerk is semiotics. I will just say those words over and over again and you will think I'm very clever. So what if someone is wearing a cast on their arm? Are they injured? Have they been playing a lot of sports? Maybe they are pretending to be ill. What if someone is wearing a thousand layers? Do we think, oh, they must be in a very cold country? Or maybe we think, they are hiding something. If they are dressed in a lovely gold dress, jewellery everywhere, hair is all up with some pearls in it, heels, a lovely handbag, do we think, oh, this person must have a lot of money? Or maybe we think, maybe they are a burglar and they have stolen all of that nice jewellery. Or maybe they are in disguise. Or maybe they are pretending to be someone else. Oh, these are all good things to be thinking about. You know who is very good at talking about costume? Is my dear friend Annie Heiner, who is a costume designer. Oh, yo. It is her job to design and sew costumes for the theatre. But she also dresses fabulously herself. She just has so much fun. I must get on the Zoom with her immediately. I'm excited. Oh, yo, Annie, hello. Hello. <gasps> oh, you are looking absolutely magnificent. Look at the roses on your head. Thank you very much. I like to wear things that make me feel happy. So today I felt like roses would make me happy. Oh, that is a lovely thing to hear. And you have, um, I think, is it dinosaur earring? Yeah, I have a dinosaur and I have some flowers. Oh, and that is a nice contrast. Good. Dinosaur flowers, see, is surprising because we think a dinosaur is scary and we think a flowers are beautiful. But actually, dinosaurs can be beautiful and flowers can be poisonous. Very true, yeah. Well, it is lovely to speak to you today, Annie, because I've been telling my Velvets at home about the costume. And you are firstly a fantastic 
designer, costume designer and maker, but also you just dress so fabulously. So I thought he's a perfect person to talk to. Thank you very much. So my first question for you is, um, what do you think it is about costume that makes you so excited? Oh, I think it's the chance to be different people. I think dressing up helps you imagine how other people behave and act. So you can play around with who you are and what you do. Oh, that is quite beautiful. Because actually it leads on to my next question, which is, do you think that, you know, you are changing the way you look on the outside with a costume, with a, an outfit, but do you think it changes the way you feel on the inside? Definitely. Um, I think that there are lots of things we do to make ourselves feel different on the inside. Um, different people wear sort of uniforms, so that can make them feel like part of a group. And other people tend to put on things that make them feel unique. So you might put on your very favourite jumper and that makes you feel neat and special. Oh, yes, to make you stand out more. Maybe you're thinking, I don't want to look the same as everyone else. Or maybe you're thinking, I do want to look the same as everyone else. And that is the decisions that you make when you dress up. Yep, absolutely. The way that we dress can often give people around us different signals about how we feel. So... Sometimes different colours mean very symbolic things to some people. If they've lost someone and are grieving, will wear black, and that will be a sign to other people that they're sad. Um, other times, people are wear bright colours because they're feeling happy. So that's a great signal for other people around them to know that they are a happy person. That is perfect, because okay. I, I was just talking to my velvets, I was in my cupboard and I was talking about semiotics, which is the signals that we see from the colours and the shapes. Um, so that is so exciting that you agree and you think it's the same kind of thing, like what do we see and what does it tell us? That is very good. So my next question for you, it is, well, do you have a favourite yeah. colour? Now that is a very hard question because on different days, I like different colors best. But I think in general, all the bright colors are my favorite. And I think yellow is my most favorite color. Oh, and you know what, Annie, as well, when I think of you, I, I think of yellow because you are like the sun. You are like a shining sun that makes me so happy and warm. Yeah, I think yellow makes me think about the sunshine and flowers and being outside. So those are the, all the things that make me happy. Oh, that is really quite beautiful. So um, our velvets at home, they are going to be putting together an outfit today, a costume. Do you have any advice for them? Maybe they don't have very many things in their cupboard. Maybe they only have a few items. What is a good place to start and to be thinking about what you can do when you don't have very many things to choose from? I think have a go at wearing clothes differently to the way you normally wear them. I think a really good thing to do would be to wear all your clothes back to front. How do you mean? So you could put your t-shirt on backwards, you could put your shirt on backwards so the buttons went up your back and you had your collar right up underneath your chin or you could put on clothes in a different order. So what if you put socks on your hands, or trousers on your head? Um, ah. You could also have a go at putting on somebody else's clothes. So what if you put on your mum and dad's shirt? Would that be very big? How would that make you feel? How would that change the way you look? You know what, when I was younger as well, I would always like to be putting the trousers on my head and pretend I had long hair. Yeah. Because I always have hair this length. And to be wearing maybe a, an orange jumper and to pretending I had a nice long ginger hair or the trousers with two plaits. I think you would have looked beautiful in them. Oh, I thank you, Annie. That's very kind of you. In general, when we are thinking about creating a show in our home, uh, what advice would you give them that they maybe should think about or consider? Um, I think you should think about what sort of reaction do you want your audience to have about what you're wearing? Are you going to try and make them laugh? 
and are you going to put on silly things? Are you going to want them to make you take you seriously? So are you going to put on a shirt and maybe a tie? Or are you going to make them feel sorry for you? So you might be a bit disheveled. Um, and then the other thing that you can think about is if you're wearing smart clothes or casual clothes, because that will change the way people see you. That is very true, I think. And maybe what you were saying as well before about maybe borrowing your parents' clothes, sometimes to have clothes too big for you or too small it can be very mm -hmm. funny. Or it can be a bit sad, you know, like, oh, why is he wearing a jumper that is so big he can, you can hardly see his face? Oh, well, thank you so much, Annie. It's been so lovely to see you. You've really brightened my day up with your beautiful flowers and your big eye that is just staring at me. <laughs> thank you very much. It's been lovely to speak to you. I hope to see you soon in the real world. Maybe we will have a lemonade or a cup of tea or something. Oh, that sounds lovely. I look forward to it. Yes. Well, take care, my darling, and I'll see you very Bye. soon. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Mm, this is nice tea. It's peppermint. Mm. Ah. Okay, cool. Well, here I am in my ghost outfit. It is my favorite and most fabulous outfit. And as you can see, I am wearing all pink. Well, mostly. Before people thought pink was very sugary and sweet and all of these things, it was actually seen as a very powerful colour of youth and energy. And it was worn by everyone, but especially boys. Oh, y'all. Because if you think about it, it is just a paler version of red. Oh, Kiki. She is trying to get all of the pink things. Pink is also her favourite colour, so she is wanting... Well, she was trying on my pink shoes, these ones, the other day. They are too big for her, but I let her play with them anyway because, you know, oh, if she likes them and they make her happy, then she can wear them. So red is seen as quite a strong and dangerous colour, so why would pink be seen as any different? And in Japan, the colour pink is associated with the samurai warriors. Oh, yo, the ones who are very brave and bold. Well, in lots of different art in Japan, they are associated with pink because when the samurai soldiers would die in the wars, they were like the pink cherry blossoms that fell from the tree. Was well, poetic, don't you think? So when I wear pink, I feel very powerful. I feel very youthful. I feel very vibrant. I feel magical. These are all important things, and that's why this is my favourite outfit. So I thought, well, here in my show, I am making in my house. It is about slime and zombies. So maybe the obvious choice for a costume might be green because of the slime, or maybe some dark or scary colours. But what if I wear all pink? That is surprising, no? That is not what you might expect, but it is kind of exciting. It makes the audience think, who is that person? Oh, yo, she is wearing a pink tutu, but she is also wearing big, exciting boots for stomping and running and being very strong. Now that is interesting. What if my character is a serious slime expert? But she also loves to dance. Oh, maybe she was at her dance class and she saw some slime coming out of the cupboard. And she thought, oh, yo, I must get on my slime expert gear. And she puts on her boots and she puts on her tool belt and she goes off to investigate the slime. Now that is the beginning of a good story. So following on from this, my task for you today is to put together a costume for your show. You excited, Kiki? She's excited. Perhaps you already have an idea of what you might wear for your costume, but it is always a good thing to surprise people. And maybe even surprise yourself. Have a look around your house. 
Maybe there are some clothes you can borrow from the people that live with you. Maybe there are some clothes packed away that you don't wear anymore because they are a bit big or maybe a bit small. Maybe there are some items that aren't clothes, but actually you could maybe wear them on your body as part of a costume. Maybe there are some clothes that you just really love. Or you've seen someone else in them and you think, oh, I want to try that on. Have a look. When you have found all of these clothes or items, put them all in one place. What do you think of this one? It reminds you of running in the jungle? From when we were on holiday last year. Okay. You have put all of your clothes that might be in the show in one place. Now you will close your eyes and pick one item. Is that surprising? Look carefully at the item you have picked. How can you wear it in different ways? What might it look good with? What might it look strange with? In a good way. What does it remind you of? These are all good things to be thinking. Sometimes it happens that you pick something and it is a bit boring. That's okay, you can have another go. The second go will be a winner. I know it. It is very important that you don't look or cheat a little bit because sometimes the pile of clothes will gift us with something we hadn't even thought of that is very surprising and might be quite exciting in our journey. Finding a character and how it relates to the show we are making. It is more exciting and surprising than if we thought of it ourselves. A bit like the hat in episode one. Oh yeah. Thank you, clothes. You must now put together a costume with the thing that you have picked. What might it go with? What else do you have in your wardrobe that could fit with it? Have a think. You can move things around and take one thing in and one thing out and see how it looks in different combinations. Oh, yo! There are no rules. For example, I have picked a furry coat. What might go with this that I have already? Hmm. I know. Something like this, because then we think, oh, they are someone who's maybe a little bit um, artistic. You are wearing a fur coat maybe when you are in a cold country, and this hat goes with that. Or maybe what would be surprising with it? Hmm. This might be quite surprising with it. It's kind of a weird combination, you know, to have a, a printed shirt with palm trees on it, because that makes us think of summer and holidays, but to have it with a fur coat, well, that is a little bit strange, we think. Who is this strange person? Why are they wearing a summer shirt and a winter coat? That is interesting though, right? So there are lots of different ways that you can combine things and move them in and out and try in different combinations. And if you have clothes that are a bit simpler, maybe they are just a coloured t-shirt or a pair of jeans, actually that is very good because I have a bit too much stuff <laughs> and it clashes and looks a bit weird sometimes, so it's good to have more simple clothings than this. Oh yeah. Try and find something that surprises you, but also makes you feel happy. Oh yeah, that is the most important thing. I very much look forward to seeing your costumes that you have chosen. Maybe you will give me some fashion tips. So, to summarize, put all of the clothes and fabrics that you might want to have in your show into a pile. Close your eyes and pick one item. You can have a second go if you do not like it so much. Then with this item, look around at what else you have and think how you can build a costume using this one item as the main part. Think about what it might go with, what it might not go with, have some fun. You can swap things in and out. You can wear things upside down or back to front or inside out. If they are too big or too small, oh, even better. Hmm, that is great. 
play with stuff on your head, stuff on your feet, stuff hanging off you like a cape, all of these things. Think about the shape you are creating. I'm very excited about this one. Okay then, goodbye! Goodbye! See you next time!